Right, welcome back to another video. So, I've got this head bracket to line bar today, or excavator bracket, or whatever you want to call it. But it's not just a straightforward line barring job. So as it is now, it's on 80 mil pins, and it's on 460 mil centers. The customer wants it line barring, so it's still on 80 mil pins, but he wants it 480 mil centers. So what, what he wants me to do is line bar offset so the, the hole is 10 mil further that way and that one's obviously 10 mil further that way. So I think the way I'm going to do this is I've plasmed out some uh, washers with the 40 mil hole that is 10 mil offset. I mean, my bar and bar is 40 mil, so I can put them in there, put my bar through, tap my bearings on, and then we should be at 480 centers. So what I did when I plasmed these rings out, these washers out, is I plasmed a line across them as well, um, which goes through the center of this hole. So if I put a straight edge across there like that, once I've got them into the head bracket, that ensures that they're both gonna be in line. So I don't end up with one like that and one like that. So it'll ensure that I've got my centers right and that the, uh, bars should be in line with each other but for some reason on this side they're a little bit slack on that side they're a tight fit so it must be more worn on this side for some reason anyway it shouldn't make too much of a difference I don't know where to tack them in or whether just to leave them loose I think I'll maybe just tack them in just put one tack on them, get my bearings mounted on, lined up, and then take these out again. First job, I'll just give the uh, holes a bit of a clean up with a white, with a sanding wheel first. Right, so I've been through the holes and given them a bit of a clean out. Um, obviously, because I'm offsetting the hole, one side will be to fill up the weld. So I've just been through there with a die grinder. Maybe wants a little bit more doing it on the top, just to clean them up so there's no contaminants in when I weld it. Now, to make the job easy for myself, I could just set my bar up with these, get everything set up take these out and then I could weld up half the hole and then just bar it straight through to 80 mil but then at the top and the bottom you, you'd only have a very thin layer of weld that would, and then it'd go down to nothing so you'd have half the hole would be weld material and the other half would be original material and that's not really the proper way the proper way is you want the same material all the way around the bar because where the weld is thin that's where you're likely to have problems with the weld and call it lamination don't know where the weld if the weld hasn't stuck properly and it can come back out because there's only a real thin layer of it so what i'm going to do is set the bearing up pre-cut it through to like 80 83 mil maybe 84 mil and i'll fill this side up with weld and then I'll run a weld up. <coughs> and I'll build a hole up all the way around with weld and then bar it through. So then, yeah, there'll be the same thickness of weld all the way around, well, apart from this bit. But, so there'll be a good two or three mil of weld on, on that bit of the hole as well, if that makes sense. Right, so I'm gonna set these bars up now. Um, I've got another bit of 40 mil chrome rod because I'm not sure whether my old bar will be long enough because I've made my new bearing mounts. Um, so I've got that, but I can use that to set up with. If that's not long enough, then I'll have to make that into a, into a barring bar. But 
yeah, we'll, uh, we'll set up and see how we get on. Right, so I've got my washers in both sides now. Sat a straight edge across the top and then a square on, on there up to the edge of the pin. So I measure from there to there to get my centres and that gives me 480 centres. Same with the other side. So now I just need to make sure that they're true that way. Right, so I'm pretty happy with where they are so I can Put my bearings on now. So what I wanted to do, and I forgot to do, was I was going to change that bearing onto this side of the plate. So then that hole would do this one, and that hole would do this one. Because I'm limited on how much travel I've got. But with the bearing on that side, the bar is not long enough to go through the bearing. But if it had been on this side, it would have been. But because them bearings aren't really precision onto these holes, if I unbolt that and bolt it on this side, I'm not sure whether it will be in line well enough without having to reline it all again. Right, so I'm going to have to reline it, I think, because I've put the bearing onto that side, but it's, it won't slide now. It just went a little bit, but it's tight. I haven't got the bolts nipped up yet, so what I'm going to have to do is Take this one off, I think. Reline it. That one should be alright. Um, yeah, we'll just reline this one, I think. Right, so I think I might have got away with that. I managed to get my plate back in and uh, get it to back where the original tack was. Change the bearing round and it slides real nice, does that? Push it through with my little finger. Well, I could do, and it jumped out this end. Now. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'll do the same on the other side now.
that, that's the second bar in. This one is a bit tighter. I mean, it's not bad. Obviously, I'll be taking this bar out, putting that bar in when I come to line bar it. But, um, just need to pull it out and take them washers out. But yeah, I know that six is uh, on your line bar now. Right, so I've got the line bar mounted on now. I've got it mounted on on its side, so then you've got the strength of, like, what you know, both bars being over the top of each other. So, set the tool up now. I'm going to use this tool. I don't really like this tool, but I haven't got any inserts from the other ones. So I'll mount that in there, and then I'll take a pre-cut. Right, so I've got that mounted in there now. It's it's twelve mil sticking out so it will should take two mil off two mil depth of cut to start with and then what I think I'll do is get it out to nearly final size which is 80 mil and then I'll decide whether I want to oversize it and weld it round or just weld up one side uh, I think it would be better if I did oversize it and weld it all the way around but I haven't decided yet but anyway we'll worry about that when I come to it, so I'll, I'll get bought out to nearly, si nearly the size I want. As I've got to this point, but it chatters too much. I'll put a new tip in as well because the old one, you know, it's gone, it took the end off somewhere. It took the end off it, so I've changed to one of these CCMT inserts. I don't really know much about inserts to be honest. But yeah, um, I'm going to put a bearing in the middle just because it's quite a distance from that bearing to that bearing and there. Uh, Hopefully it will make, reduce the chatter a bit. Right, so I've got another bearing tacked in the middle now. Hopefully that will stop it chattering. If not, I'll have to do less of a cut, but I don't really want to be doing that.
Right, so I've got them bored out to within an inch, not an inch, but hell, uh, a millimetre of the overall size. But while it was cutting, I've had time to think and I've decided that's probably not the best way to do it. So, like I said, what I was going to do is overcut it and then weld all the way around and then fill in this side and then cut it through so you, you know, you've got your weld all the way around. But the side of this side, I'm going to do it different. So I've taken the bearing off and I've uh, plasmed out this. So that's like, that's like the new side of the hole. That's the old side of the hole. So if you sit that in there, you can see how much needs filling in with weld. But what I'm going to do, I've already die ground a bit out, but it's too slow the die grinder. So what I'm going to do is um, air out, gouge some out the bottom of there, where the weld, where, where the changeover is from the new material to the old material, or new material to the old material. I'm going to gouge it out, um, and then fill that in with weld, and fill all this in with weld, same at the top, gouge a bit out. So then where the changeover is between this metal and the weld metal, there'll be, you know, good thickness of, of weld rather than it coming down to nothing and then changing over, if that makes sense. And then build all this weld up and then bar it out. So then it's cutting at both sides of the hole. Like when I did that side, it was only cutting at one side of the hole, which not very nice doing it like that. It's all a bit of a learning curve, is this, I've not done this type of job before so um yeah that's that's me thinking anyway So you can see now when I put my plate in there, where the crossover is going to be, there's going to be a good depth of weld. So it's not going to delaminate. Oh, it's not going to be thin. It's you know, it's decent amount of weld. Right, so I've got them all welded up now. Um, that was not fun. I did not enjoy that at, at all. This one was tricky because it's an 80 mil, 80 mil bar and it's 90 mil wide. But with this big torch, when I was welding through, and then when you get to the other side, because you're at a, not a very good angle, I think the stick out on the wire is too long and it was causing it to splatter a bit and then all the splatter was falling back down onto what I've already welded. So it, it doesn't look doesn't look brilliant, but um, it's, it's filled up anyway. But then when you look at this side, when I did the other side, I changed onto the smaller welder, which that one's on one mil wire and that one's on one point two mil wire. So there's not as much splatter on this one. So I was using my little template that I cut out as a it's like a guide to see whether I'd had an, got enough weld in there or not. It's, it's definitely a skill of its own, is bar welding. Um, I haven't quite mastered it yet, but I haven't really done that much bar welding like this, so it's all practice.
Well, the auto feed unit didn't last very long. Something's gone wrong with it. Oh, uh, I'll just take take that in bits now and see what's up with that. Uh, I've just taken the bottom off. And it's nothing too serious. It's just the bolts have come out that hold the gear onto that hub. So uh, yeah, that's all right. Might put a bit more grease in there as well. There's not much grease in there. Right, so that's them two done. I'll take the bar out and move on to the other side. Right, so we've got it swapped onto this side now. Um, gonna do another little experiment. Because when it's, it's only cutting at one side of the hole to start with, it, it was it was like flexing a little bit on the round bar. But when I had both round bars above each other, um, it, it didn't have didn't have the strength of them being side by side. So now I've put it that way on, so side by side. And so when it cuts at this side of the hole, it'll have more strength that way on, see if that makes any difference.
Right, so I've got this new little tool. Um, I'm going to try that and see whether it goes any better with this. I'll have to round the corners off a bit first. Right, so we're on to the last hole now. So we'll see how this new tool likes um, intermittent, intermittent cuts. Right, so we've got one last cut to do, just need to move the tool out 0.78 of a millimetre. This new tool is cutting 10 times better than the old tool.
Right, so I'm just doing a little comparison of chips of what the two different tools have done. So that's a new one. That's the type of chips that that one's cut. That's the old tool that I was using that wasn't cutting very well. And that's the type of chips that that one was making. Right, so they're all cut to size now. I was wanting to chamfer the holes with this like neutral tool, but I can't cut backwards. I can't cut that way because it just pulls it out of the mass taper. So I need to find a way of holding that in. So I'm not going to bother chamfering them. Um, there's just a bit more. I have to grind a bit more off. I only sort of roughly ground it off, so that one's smoothing off better. I don't have a facing head either, so I can't face them off. But um, it shouldn't matter. I'll just buff them off at grinder. So that's that part of the job done. But now there's another job to do. The customer wants another hole cut in, in here. That's 380 centers, but with a smaller hole. So he wants it 65 mil hole in there. So I'll take, I'll take all this lot off. I'll leave this these bearings on because this is like the lead hole on the head bracket. So I can keep, I can put a bar back in there and then use that to measure where the new hole needs to be. Right, so I've got my new holes marked on there, where they, where they need to be. So I'm going to have to cut them out with a gas, best I can. Um, and then, he's giving me these. He wants me to chop them off and he wants me to weld them on, on the outside, like the same as what these are. So they're 60 mil and these holes need to be 65 mil. So what I'm going to do is, so what I'm going to do is bar these out to 60 mil, and then I'll I'll make these fit, line them up, just sort of by feeling the edge of the hole, weld them round, and then bar the whole thing throughout to 65 mil. Well, that's the first hole cut in. For me, I don't think that was too bad. I mean, it's not very round, but it's not raggedy. And we'll get the boring bar through there and the boring bar will soon sort it out. Right, so we'll do the same with this side now. Cut down there, be a bit more tricky because of this, because of the depth of that. Right, that one's that one cut out as well. Again, it's not very round, but round enough to get the, the boring bar through. Right, so to get the line bar in the right place for this second hole, what I've done is I've reused these plates. And I've tapped them together with a bit of plate in the middle, the right spacing to get 380 centers. So I can put that onto the bar like that. And then I'll just move that up and down where I need it to get the bar in the right place. And I'll like clamp that onto the side, put my bar through, put my bearings up, and 
it should be relatively simple getting the bar where I need it. Right, so I've got the bar set up now using the spaces that I made. I've double checked it all, everything's right. So we can slide the bearings on and weld the bearings on now. Right, so it's all mounted back on again now, bearing in the middle again, bearing at either end. So I'm going to use a neutral tool this time because it's the one that will go furthest into the bar because it's it's real close on here, so it might still be too much for it, but I'm not sure. Pretty impressed that it managed to cut through there all right when you look at the width of some of the chips that were coming out it was doing a full full tool depth full depth cut in some places then Right, so I've got them all out to 60mm now. Just hope I haven't cut too much out at the top there. It's going to be 65mm, I just hope there's in, enough. I don't want to have to fill it back in again. So now I've got these to cut off right across there. What I've done is I've drawn a 60mm circle for, this, for that centre hole. And then 90mm away, I've drawn another circle, which is the same size as the bush that I line board out first and then now I can see where me where me uh, lines intersect this bit so if I cut this bit off across there like that then it should fit onto the onto the head bracket So I've got this one chopped down, and now that can... Ah. Now that can get welded on there. I'll line it up with the hole, weld it on, and then line bar it through to 65mm. Right, so I've got them welded on, just, I've just put a weld around the outside, just hold them on. And then I'll I'll weld them on properly once I've once I've got these taken off. And that one on there as well. So we can uh, put the line bar back on and line bar them through.
Uh, that's that one done. So we're on to the last hole, finally. Right, so that's the line boring done now. We can uh, we can take the all the line boring gear off. Right, so I've got these bits welded on now. Got them welded round. So I've got one last job to do, which is to drill the hole through there for the bolt that holds a pin in. But because the hole is now 10mm offset, I'm not drilling through right on the top. So whether the drill will go through all right, you know, with it being um, drilling through on a slope, this drill doesn't have much of an angle on it, so it might be all right. We'll have a go. If not, I'll have to weld a bit of plate on, some, a bit of flat plate on across there to drill through first. And then that'll, that'll keep the drill in the right place. Right, so I've marked that on there. I've done a nice big centre mark and then I've ground next to it flat. So the drill shouldn't bite on one side before it bites on the other. Right, so it's mounted on the radial arm now. Looks a big lump when it's sat on there. So we'll get the radial arm into place and hopefully it drills through nice and easy. Yeah, so it's wandered off. That's where the scent is supposed to be, and that's where it is now. You can see it's wandered off. Uh, so I'll have to I'll have to do something different. I won't even I won't even attempt to start that one because if it does the same, it'll just make the job harder. So the, the way I'm going to overcome this problem is I've drilled a bit of plate with the same drill that I want to drill through there. So I'm going to tack that on like that, and then that'll act as a guide guide the drill through in the right place.
nearly through the last bit to blunt on the drill I'll have to sharpen it up again and then slow it down So the drill guide worked well, I'll, I'm going to tack one on the other side before I even attempt to drill it. Right, so I've got them blocks taken off the top now and that's pretty much finished. So it's been a bit of a learning curve because I am still a beginner when it comes to line barring. And there's a few lessons that I've learnt. So one of the lessons that I've learnt is, you can see in this bar there's still a few holes that, that are there that haven't filled in properly. So what I've learnt from that is 1.2mm big wire is too thick for bar welding. You're better off with either 1mm or 08 mill wire and then you don't have to have as much power on to get the wire to melt especially when you're on a, a real bad angle with the torch so you can see on the first hole that i cut the cut quality is pretty bad it's rough and what i realize now is because the tool is too low in the hole and it's sort of rubbing and cutting instead of instead of it being up there like the new tool is so it's cutting on the front edge of the tool when it's down there it's sort of cutting sort of and rubbing as well so that's why it takes a lot more power to to drive it and don't cut very nice now i did try grinding a bit off it off the top to get it to turn it around a bit but obviously it's still still not very good compared to the new tool which is a lot higher in the bar so that's why that one cuts a lot nicer so that hole there was also cut with the old tool that's not too bad and these were all cut with the new tool that one's nice, you can sort of see the colours, the colours on that one. So yeah, I'm not 100% happy with the results. So that dodgy bit of bar welding lets it down a little bit, and then the cut quality on that hole also lets it down a little bit. But the fixed pins, so it won't affect, it won't affect its operation. And then sort of the lessons I've learnt from this job I can take on into the next job and ensure that I don't run into the same problems again. So I can't show you with the pins in because the pins are bent. This is one of the pins. Put a straight edge across it. You can see how bent it is. So obviously it won't go through both holes. But I can show you, show you the pin through one of the holes.
Right, just to show you that the pins do fit through the holes. I've got them both in. Say, because they're bent, they won't fit. You see them and turn it. How far out that one is. This one probably would fit if you had a big enough hammer, but it's not as bad, not as bent in that one. But they're still fairly bruised up, so they take a bit of wiggling through the hole. So with some new pins, should be right. I don't have a 65 mil pin, so I can't show you that one. So yeah, it's been a bit of a, bit of a long one, is this one. If you've uh, managed to make it this far, well done. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.